Right. You've also been to Mongolia quite a few times, I imagine. Yes, I have. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting place, as you can imagine, but um, growing rapidly. So uh, it is. A I mean, I mean, as a growth opportunity, right now the markets are bedeviled by uncertainty, and clearly they're looking for opportunity to, to put their money in safe havens. Mongolia, a risk market or a uh, certainly a risk market. I mean, any frontier market is a risk market by definition. Um, there's all sorts of uh, political situations that might obviously add an element of risk to your investment. Um, however, we believe Mongolia is a sensible uh, risk, and obviously risk obviously is always related to returns, and we think that there will be very big returns in Mongolia uh, to be had by those investors willing to take on that risk. And the, Silk, the Quam Silk Road Mongolia Fund, the game for months, the return... Yes. It's beaten the markets, which is probably not hard in this market environment. But that, that's very true. We were good time to launch it, though. Very, very good time to launch. Uh, we launched on the 8th of August, which is obviously the day where the markets collapsed. Uh, the idea was to launch it in a very conservative manner anyway. So uh, the fund is up 1.3%. The Silk Road Index, which is our uh, internationally listed Mongolian stock index, was down 4% in the same time frame. Um, obviously, we, we're not fully invested. Um, we're not charging our investors until the cash proportion of our book becomes part of the investment um, sort of strategy, really. Um, but, but we do have uh, holdings both in Mongolian equities and also internationally listed equities, and we also hold some of the local currency, the Mongolian Tugrit. Uh, is, it, I mean, is it a very liquid market or the opposite? Uh, the Mongolian stock market itself is very illiquid, um, mm -hmm. and so we can only hold a small proportion nice. of our book in Mongolian stocks. That's why we use the Silk Road Index, because that's an index which includes uh, market capitalization of about 31 billion um, of internationally listed stocks listed in Toronto, Australia, Hong Kong, and London mainly. You said then about coke and coal, clearly that's one of the areas of, of opportunity and growth and asset valuation perhaps. I mean, where else do you see the opportunity in Mongolia as regards making money yes, in the next months. Uh, Coke and Coal is mostly the Tavern Tolgo project, which you heard about earlier. Mm. Um, uh, there are lots of other opportunities in terms of rare earths. There's also Oyo Tolgo, which is the Ivanhoe project, or uh, the main Ivanhoe project. The great name um, Ivanhoe. <laughs> Exactly. Well, very popular, that stock. Um, but the, the reality is, is that's mostly copper, gold and silver um, and, and huge amounts of it. I think Oyo Tolgo is um, predicted to be uh, the third, if not second biggest uh, copper deposit in, found in the world, um, certainly over the last sort of 20, 30 years. There's obviously so. a gold price today heading towards 2000, heading towards 1920, which thereafter technically is going to go up, they're saying, towards 2000. Silver obviously in demand, rising this year significantly, and clearly copper. So Mongolia was seeing Coke and Coal as well. It really is a good uh, growth fund. What's your target, therefore, for return this year? Well, this year, too hard to say right <laughs> this, this year is very difficult. Come on, put your neck um, Well, we, we'd like to see a, a, a return, obviously, relative to risk. So we think you could get 25% returns this year. By investing um, in your fund? Well, certainly uh, it's going to be a bit more difficult for us, no but, uh, but the, in terms of the market, certainly. Uh, Mongolia's, uh, the market went up 40% or 43% at the beginning of, in the first half of this year. Um, in terms of Mongolian GDP growth, Mongolian GDP grew 14% um, in the first six months of this year. It was expected by the IMF to have grown about 8%. So obviously that's you know huge uh, growth that we will expect to filter down into um, pe people's cash balances in their banks, obviously. Uh, and the GDP per person stands at about $2,000 at the moment, $2,500. Uh, that's expected to double by 2015 and quadruple by 2018. It is flanked by Russia and China, so they're pretty big neighbours to have. And clearly China, the growth, we've got inflation out on Friday. I mean, how does that impact the Mongolian growth story? Very much so. 85% uh, of Mongolian exports are actually exported to China. Um, so obviously that, that does matter, and, and a slowdown in China um, will have knock-on effects to Mongolia. However, um, we believe that Mongolia is a significantly cheaper place, um, certainly in the future, once the infrastructure has been built, to uh, export commodities from into China, or import them into China, right, I should say. Um, uh, where, and you've seen that by actually coking coal as an example. Um, Mongolian imports of coking coal were higher than any of the other countries uh, into China. So, for instance, that it was higher than Australia, um, higher than Chile, and places like that. So, so this has um, uh, been a huge step up, I suppose, and China are investing a lot of money in, into that relationship. This morning you're waking up, you're nervous, look at the market, sell off, and you think, right, Simon Potter's the man, I'm going to go invest in Mongolia. I think for some investors, um, uh, the, the correct investors are willing to take the risk, and I hope so, yes. The risk with uh, 
education mind, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it has the backup of commodities. I think commodities, uh, the supply-demand story is still very strong. Um, there, there's obviously an increasing demand, and I think over the long term, if you take a Rio Tinto view of it, where they only look at really what they're going to be doing in the next 20 to 25 years, although short term the markets look a bit scary, I think in the long term Mongolia's growth story will hold up pretty well against other emerging and frontier markets.